Welcome. Today, we're gonna take a tour of the shop. Come with me. We're gonna start our workshop tour up front here. This table is arguably one of the most important parts of the entire shop and it's not in a machine. This is a four by eight. And the reason I wanted this size was specifically because I wanted four people to be able to sit at this table and work all at the same time. This is essentially our kitchen table. We do everything here and a lot of it together. And I like that. It's kind of part of our community social aspect of working together. The other benefit, of course, is that it can hold two to three wedding dresses at a time. So we need to be able to cut and measure and orient ourselves in general, be able to have piles of stuff. I'm working on this, I'm working on that. That's what we love about this. And the entire thing is a cut top. So this uh, Ryan mat comes in a four by eight measurement. And that's awesome because we can cut with a rotary blade. Let me show you that. So we can cut with a rotary blade anywhere on this table. Dream, absolute dream for wedding dresses especially. So what's next? Let's head on back to our tool and thread wall. So this is a really nice setup right here, not just because it's very pretty, but because we need really good light to match the thread color. So you might walk out into the daylight and something looks different than it does indoors. What we're trying to do here is replicate the daylight as much as possible. So when we pull a garment over here, we have a pair of pants or a dress with us, we can hold it up and see which one is gonna match best. You'll notice that I've got some small little guys. These are the regular bobbins for the regular straight stitch machine. And our bigger spools here are gonna be for the serger and cover stitch where we need multiple colors. So you'll notice on the, the cones, we've got five cones for every single color. And that really plays into how the machines work. Finally, we've got our scissors hanging because they should be hanging. Don't jam them into a canister or something like that. You know that dulls the edges. So we've got all of this stuff, easy access, easy to be able to pull, and then universal feet for the uh, straight stitch machines, which we'll get to. We've got three back there. And so we keep our little box of feet up here so that we can all use them. All right, now it gets a little heavier. You ready? So let's start at the iron. This beauty, okay, this is a little bit of a story. This um, Husky workbench, I bought off the floor at Home Depot and I loved it because I wanted to be able to store things, but I also wanted a hard wooden top because I feel like we never have a big enough ironing board, ever, ever, ever. So we needed a big stable surface and a great platform to build up our heat resistant product on. So what do I mean by that? Under this muslin cover is basically the same thing that goes inside of an oven mitt. And there's a heat resistant insulation layer and then a wool, we've added a wool felt layer and then bound up a couple layers of muslin on top with a staple gun. So when this guy starts to get dirty, I just pull the top muslin layer off and then we staple gun a new layer of muslin on top and then we're clean and ready and good to go. It doesn't matter how many you pile up really. Um, and the more resistance, heat resistant material is built up between that and the wood surface below is just better for pressing in general. So how long could I talk about this ironing station? For Ever. But let's move on to the iron. This gravity fed iron is also a huge, huge, huge component of our sewing practice in general. If you've sewn for any amount of time at all, you know that the best sewing is 50% ironing. So this guy stays on 24 7. JK, not while we're here. This one stays on as 
much as we are here, you'll notice that it sits face down. It does not sit on its heel. Gravity fed irons have a heat resistant rubber pad that they sit on. This one's only been on for a couple of minutes and it's already like so hot, you can barely touch it. That's a good sign. And our gravity fed tank, meaning the water is above where the iron is. Typically they want you to do it at least 36 inches, so two to three feet. And then it funnels down this line, which we often will accidentally put the iron on top of and it will melt immediately. So this I buy backup of also at Home Depot. Home Depot has not yet sponsored this video, but we'll see. So we've got our iron, we've got our tank, and then we have this glorious wall. So we do try to keep as much supplies as possible. It's impossible to have everything because as I like to say, having an alteration shop is like having a restaurant that makes every kind of food. So we gotta be ready to make spaghetti and sushi and hamburgers like every single day. So we try to do that by maintaining a huge supply of literally whatever you can think of. Material that we've taken off of other wedding dresses, uh, different types of skin tone mesh. Uh, apparently we include mermaids in that skin tone because there's gold in here as well, <laughs> good. Um, cups in every size that we can get, all different kinds of buttons. We keep everything very labeled because Organization is gonna be our best friend in the shop back here. Everything is moving really fast as soon as we open the doors. So we try to keep things really well organized so that we know where to get it when we need it and we know when we don't have it so that supplies and ordering can go really smooth as well. All right, let's move to the first machine. No, stop one moment and look at this. This shepherd's hook is really important. We put this up at the end of the board. It looks a little inconveniently placed, but we use this to prop up larger dresses most of the time so that we can get to the end of them or get to the front of them and stack some of the material up here so that it's out of the way, but also not on the floor. Very key, love that. Okay, next up. We've got our line of straight stitches right across the back here. So all three of these babies are regular straight stitch machines. They do not zigzag. They do not do anything fancy at all. And that's why we love them. They only reverse and you can change the stitch length. I'm pretty sure that's it. So these are gonna be packed every single day. I think I tried to sit down at one of these yesterday and I couldn't, I just had to do something else because we love these, we all use them a ton. Now, I have these set up kind of in these C cubbies, these little cute corner pockets. And that allows us to go from sewing to pinning something right here to immediately ironing I mean, sometimes if I'm sewing a really big wedding dress, I literally won't even take it all the way from the sewing machine up here to press something really quickly Ugh. and then bring it back over to the machine almost without leaving. You can also typically get some kind of workout in if you're gonna do that because it involves a lot of squats. So bonus, it's basically like we're in the gym all the time. Now, another important feature of this table and why I got us a couple of these tables like this is because they are like standing desk tables, basically. So sometimes we'll raise up the tables like this, uh, though it looks a little nerdy because we can set hand sewing directly almost at eye level like this. And this will help our necks and backs because, you know, by nature, you do sort of hunch, hunch as you get into the sewing position. So we try to alleviate some of that pressure by having these tables that will raise up so that I can actually sew right in front of my face without having to hunch over all the time. So that's really fun. Or get really crazy and just stand up because it's a standing desk, that is the point. So who's next? My little blind hammer here. This guy, is a really important machine that is very finicky. If any of you have ever used a blind hammer or watched the other blind hemming video, I've probably mentioned this. They aren't the easiest machines to use. However, they have one single function. They don't reverse. They don't do anything other than that one function. And 
they only have one line of thread coming in. This should be the easiest. However, <laughs> they're not always. So I've got this guy front and center because admittedly, if I need to run back here and help fix or figure out some sort of tension issue, I want it to be right here. This also is going to be a big workhorse for pant hems. So you're gonna throw a pant hem on here to blind hem it up and then immediately jump over to the iron, press it and go. So this orientation is really intentional because these machines oriented next to the iron are ideal. This is a super efficient way to work. Let's move to our next little cubby. So we've got another sewing machine right here, which is very fun for socialization, probably one of my favorites, to have somebody on this side and somebody on this side, and then we can mainly chat and sometimes sew. Also has use of this machine, or this table here. And then a little bit of extra workspace here. So if you've got overflow from a wedding dress or something like that, you've got that here. Next, we have our little dueling sergers. I have these babies set up here. Um, one, again, because this is on a, uh, a robot table. Robot table? A uh, table that you can move. So this one can be stood up as well. And sometimes when you're trying to maneuver to get the garment under this foot, you can move it, you might need more space here, you might need more space here. And so we try to keep the thread trees far enough from each other, but close enough so that they, you can maneuver around them and get that garment into the machine right here. This little guy we keep because, admittedly, the smaller serger is a little bit easier to thread and so we'll keep different colors and pull those through easier. When the big guy gets unthreaded, it's a little bit more difficult to rethread. So honestly, we leave the industrial in black most of the time. It is the most common color that we're gonna use on this machine because when we're blind hemming the bottom of pants, which is one of the biggest things that we do, it's almost always a dark enough color that the black serge on the inside is good enough. We don't always match the thread color of the serging because most of the time serging is on the inside of the garment. And so anything dark can typically go black and anything lighter can often go white. Or again, we use the little guy here to thread up in different colors off the wall. But same function, just different weights. Weights of fabric, pressure from the machine itself, feed from the machine itself. This industrial, of course, has a good, smooth, consistent, strong feed. It's got a heavy motor in the bottom. And so when we wanna make sure that we can really get maybe a bulky fabric through with an even stitch, we're gonna go with the big guy. If it's something lighter weight, this little guy can definitely do the trick. Nice, smooth feed easy to change the blades as well. The upkeep and maintenance on this smaller domestic serger is a dream. Nice and easy, super smooth. All right, we've got our last straight stitch that I think is Daria's favorite. Is this the one you like to work on? Yes, I can switch from here to here. So she likes this little cubby because you can move straight from here to here in the same chair. So everybody's got their different little setups that they prefer. And that's why each one of these is a little bit different. I think I like the first one the best, but maybe that's just because my Juki is my favorite. It is, I just love it. I've had it for a long time. We've finally made it to the back, which is our cover stitch corner. Why do we have two cover stitches? Same reason again. We like to have backups. If any one of the machines goes down, it really affects the whole flow of our production in the shop in general. But also, we keep this one threaded in black all the time. There is one of the most common things that we get in here is black spandex, black leggings. And these machines are for stretch materials. So what do they do? Mainly, they just hem. They do sleeves and pant bottoms for all stretchy, athletic, or performance materials. And again, we've got one loaded in black and then the other loaded in whatever color Hannah was using last. <laughs> so 
both of these again, they're not facing each other, but we keep the thread trees backed up against each other because there are so many threads going into both of these machines that we also keep it back here because we're trying to preserve the tension and integrity of all 10, as you can see, of these threads. So we do set it back here on purpose. I do also keep it up against this wall because we use this as secondary organization for garments coming in. So we'll stack different things out here, especially stretch materials, which we don't always hang. Sometimes we put in bags because it's better for them. And so we use this shelving to stage our different fabrics, stage our different garments, keep little stretch scratch scratch stretch materials bin and then extra threads as well speaking of scrap material that's an important one too we keep a bin back here and these are all of our little stretchy bits that have been cut off of um like i said performance garments oh that's a cool one and we've also got our scrap bins up front the scrap bins are really important uh, for so many reasons and alterations. One, because we use it for patching, we use it for testing the machines, we use them for whatever. We like to have a real good variety of materials. So I'll keep one with general scraps, anything, dress bottoms, whatever, and another with specifically pant bottoms. The reason being that these scraps are so perfect for testing out the machines. The machines really need just little upkeep, tweak on the tension, or you know they all run on oil. So it's really important to run scrap fabric through before we start using the machines because these industrials, specifically the heavy cover stitch, but also the serger and our straight stitches, are all oil reservoir machines. What does that mean? It means they sit in a reservoir of oil. These machines are so heavy duty that they are literally running oil through out of this little pit of oil every single time there is a rotation of the needle. And so sometimes that oil can come up and you'll notice drops of it coming through the needle. So we're super cognizant of that and we keep those scraps so that we can always run it, keep it clean, keep it smooth. But these industrial machines, they love to be used, they need to be used. And if they're not getting that use every day, kind of like a car, they'll start to malfunction, start to bunch up on the tension. You'll start to see that oil kind of leaking out in odd places. And so that's the other thing about having this many machines in this shop is we want to keep things running smoothly because they like it and we like it. <laughs> now you can see it all. We started up here at the cutting table and then we moved back here. We got the iron, all the machines along the wall, and then coming back up our machines along the aisle here. So hopefully the close up and now the large scale orientation will give you an idea of exactly how the garments move through and what machines they go to and how they get done. Let's take a look at the dressing rooms next. This is the bridal suite. We use this for appointments and for wedding dresses. As you can see, we've got a lot of space here. We have room for mom and grandma and best friend to sit down and see all of the action. We've got a huge, big dressing room for the girls to come out of. So I really like this area and I like the privacy of it. I like that it's both blocked off from the front, but also really easy to take the wedding dress and just pop over here for some last minute details, which we often do. Fix a hook and eye, change one of the bustle loops, reposition the cups, whatever. We're able to do that in the middle of the hour long wedding appointment with the bride here and mom here and I can sit and throw the dress up here and sew while I'm talking to them. So this section of the shop, I designed specifically this way for this reason. I like that it was private from the front, but it was also intimate in a way that allowed me to spend more time with the bride, with the customer, and also complete the work so that they could see it. I love the transparency of it. And I just, I love the hominess. I love the feeling of having a couch right here and really feeling comfortable because sometimes alterations isn't always a comfortable process because it can be confusing and mysterious and we're trying to 
dispel that feeling. So that's why I set this up this way. All right, let's jump on up to the front. We've got one more. We like to use this dressing room for pickups. So when somebody has already come in for their fitting and they just want to run in, run out, we use this one. So we let them have a mirror in here. The other two dressing rooms don't have mirrors. And that's because when you're first putting a garment on, remember, you came here for the fitting because the garment doesn't fit. And so sometimes people will get hung up in the dressing room, looking at it in the mirror going, oh, I really don't like this. Yes, right. So we're trying to get them out the door so that we can see them in front of the mirror instead of getting them stuck in there in the dressing room. This one on the other case is just to admire the finished work. So that's why I love this one. This is our like newest little dressing room. The importance of the whiteboard <laughs> cannot be understated. <laughs> this entire wall was set up here specifically for this purpose. Truly cannot be understated. We have so many people working at so many different hours, seven days a week, in and out of the shop. And so anytime you want to write a little love note to somebody else who's going to be here 10 hours from now when you aren't, voila, you can do it. And we do. So we love this. This is texting and cell phones, but better. And also totally not. We're learning Spanish as well. I don't know how well we're doing, but um, Eva tells us it's going fine. She's probably just being nice. She also helps us correct some of these words. Dobla, because they don't actually use, I guess, that word. This one is completely wrong. They just say taper. She just says taper to us. All right, we're ending up here at the front, and this is our walk-in area. So this is where we see folks that come in without an appointment, maybe they have a quick pant hem, whatever. And we've got this nice big open area for strollers and wheelchairs and bring all of the family members and kids. So we've got a nice little seating area here. We've got some cute plants and um, a couple of mirrors so that you can maybe just throw on a blazer real quick or jump into our front dressing room here. So nice big open area, lots of room for activities. And we've recently been working on trying to deck out our dressing rooms. So we've got what is called an exploded parts view. So this is directly out of the manual for one of the straight stitch machines in the back to show you if you can just barely make that out, all of the different parts. So TBD work in progress. We're gonna actually label all of them as well. So we really like to perpetuate this idea of the transparency of sewing. I don't want to hide it away. I want to literally bring it out into the light. And that is what we're trying to do with this orientation and setting up the shop this way. So thanks for coming. Thanks for checking out my shop with me. It's fun to share. It's taken a while to get here. This is the third location that we've had, but the first one that I actually designed myself, walls and all. Everything is oriented this way with intention on purpose because it allows us the best freedom and our customers the best movement and I just love it. Thanks, thanks for coming.